a young boy observes something unusual about his mother's physical appearance during her funeral visitation. He shares his observation with the other adults in attendance. This leads to an unexpected turn of events, halting the planned funeral proceedings. What transpires next has the dramatic, twisting elements of a classic mystery novel. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. On a gloomy Tuesday in Dallas, the heavens opened, enveloping the city in a somber downpour. The funeral parlor was packed, with mourners from near and far gathered to comfort the grieving family. Young Tony struggled to contain his immense sorrow, his eyes still red and scratchy from tears. Clutching his uncle's hand tightly, he navigated through the sea of somber faces until they reached the open casket. Tony stared into his mother's serene features, his heart heavy with grief. But just as he was about to succumb to his sorrow once more, he noticed something that seemed out of place. His uncle, observing the boy's pensive expression, leaned down and asked softly, What's wrong, Tony? With effort, Tony tore his eyes away from the casket, whispering that his mother's hand was missing a distinctive scar he knew well. His uncle, sensing the child's distress, tried to reassure him that the funeral home's preparations could account for such differences. But Tony remained unconvinced. He knew every detail of his beloved mother, and this was not her. As the grown-ups resumed their murmured conversations, Tony slipped away, determined to investigate further. Drawing on his love of detective stories, he made his way to the funeral home's back offices, intent on searching for any clues that might shed light on this unsettling mystery. The quiet room was filled with filing cabinets, and Tony eyed them carefully, hoping to find a starting point for unraveling this perplexing situation. This should work, Tony thought, scanning the alphabetical labels on the filing cabinets. J for Jackie or D for Dorner. If there's information about my mom, it'll be in that file. He felt a surge of determination as he quickly located the correct drawer. Tony carefully retrieved the thick cardboard file, his heart pounding. Flipping it open, he found page after page of unfamiliar documents. Disappointed, he began to replace the file. But as he did so, another folder caught his eye. One labeled JD, curiosity peaked, he pulled it out. The label Jane Doe immediately told Tony this was the file of an unidentified person. Glancing at the dates, he noticed this body had been brought to the morgue just minutes after his mother's. That couldn't be a coincidence. Tony carried the file to the large desk in the middle of the room, spreading the contents out before him. As he reviewed the details, his eyes widened. The physical description matched his mother. Same height, weight, hair, and eye color. But one key detail stood out. The file noted no visible scars. That was in stark contrast to the scar Tony knew so well on his mother's hand. Realization dawned on him. The woman in the casket was not his mother after all. Others might be fooled by the resemblance, but Tony knew better. His mother's distinctive scar was missing, and this Jane Doe seemed to fit the description. Filled with a new determination, Tony began racking his brain, trying to recall anything unusual about his mother's final days. Then it hit him. She had been on the phone with someone just before her death. Perhaps those conversations held a vital clue. That evening, after his uncle dropped him at home, Tony hurried to the attic, the one place in the house his mother had forbidden him to enter. Ignoring that rule, he began frantically searching for any evidence that could help unravel this mystery. Within minutes, he discovered his mother's journals and a folder filled with threatening emails, clues that could be the key to uncovering the truth. A faint smile crept across Tony's face. He knew his mother all too well. Nothing short of a direct threat to her life would have compelled her to abandon a story, no matter how perilous. She was as brave and determined as they came. An hour later, Tony found himself in the kitchen, staring out the window as he sipped his juice. His gaze returned to the memory of his mother's hand in the casket, and he felt more certain than ever that the woman lying there was not her. The clues he'd uncovered in her notebooks and emails pointed to something far more sinister. 
but Tony knew he had no solid evidence to convince the adults of his suspicions. He was just a heartbroken child in their eyes. Suddenly, an idea struck him. Miss Henderson, the seasoned journalist his mother had trusted. If anyone could help unravel this mystery, it would be her. Tony tried to call, but when she didn't answer, he decided to bike over to her house. As the door swung open, Miss Henderson's demeanor shifted, her eyes darting suspiciously up and down the street before she ushered him inside. Your mother was onto something big, Tony, she confided in a hushed tone. Something very dangerous that could ruin lives if she published her story. Tony's heart raced as the pieces began to fall into place. His mother's disappearance was no accident, and the woman in the casket was an imposter. Pedaling furiously home, Tony's mind whirled with possibilities. He was no longer just a grieving son seeking answers. He was a key player in an attempt to uncover the truth and preserve his mother's legacy. Tomorrow, he would seek out his mother's trusted partner, Kieran Daniels, and enlist his help in this perilous quest for justice. Kieran Daniels greeted Tony with the same cautious demeanor as Miss Henderson. He was clearly saddened by the loss of his friend and colleague, Jackie, but when Tony broached the subject of her final investigation, Kieran's posture grew tense. Undeterred, Tony methodically laid out his suspicions, placing the threatening emails he had discovered on the coffee table between them. As Kieran read through the messages, the color drained from his face. Nobody's going to believe me that the woman in the coffin is not my mother, Tony pleaded. I have one day left until the funeral, then it will be too late. Kieran nodded solemnly, then retrieved a flash drive. This contains security footage from the days leading up to Jackie's disappearance, he revealed, explaining that he had obtained it through a contact at the police department. The video clips painted a troubling picture, and heated exchange between Jackie and an unidentified individual, followed by footage of her leaving the office late one night, a thick envelope tucked under her arm. What if Jackie had arranged her own disappearance to get out in front of whoever was threatening her? Kieran suggested, handing Tony an envelope. Your mother gave this to me in case anything ever happened to her. Tony's fingers trembled as he tore open the envelope, his eyes scanning the note within. His heart sank as he read his mother's words, instructing him to trust his uncle and that she was not safe. The letter only solidified his belief that the woman in the casket was not Jackie Dorner. Sensing Tony's growing resolve, Kieran ushered him into the car, explaining that they were headed to a safe house used by the journalists when a sensitive story was about to break. As they drove, Kieran took circuitous routes, ensuring they weren't being followed. Upon arriving at the unassuming suburban home, however, they found it vacant and lifeless, a dead end in their search for answers. Tony's shoulders slumped, but he knew he couldn't give up now, not when his mother's life might be on the line. Tony felt his heart sink as the funeral approached, his desperate search for evidence yielding no conclusive proof that his mother was alive or that the woman in the casket was not Jackie Dorner. Just as he was about to admit defeat, Kieran placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You've done your best, kid. I'll keep looking, the seasoned journalist promised, watching as Tony solemnly climbed onto his bicycle and headed home. The next afternoon at the graveside service, Tony stood rigid, his gaze fixed on the casket as it was slowly lowered into the earth. As his uncle guided him forward to toss a final handful of dirt, Tony's phone suddenly buzzed in his pocket. Glancing down, he felt his heart skip a beat. The message contained a photograph of a scarred hand clutching a newspaper bearing today's date. Urgently grabbing his uncle's arm, Tony showed him the image, halting the ceremony as police arrived to cordon off the gravesite and launch a full investigation. Two weeks later, the truth came to light. Jackie Dorner had been held captive since her disappearance, the victim of a corrupt syndicate she'd been investigating. The Jane Doe in the casket was swiftly identified and laid to rest by her own family. As the dust settled, Tony and his mother were finally reunited, their extraordinary bond stronger than ever. With the shocking ordeal behind them, they sat together on the couch, tears of joy and relief streaming down their faces, grateful to have one another back in their lives.